We will now discuss preventive maintenance. The following T-codes are necessary for preventive maintenance. IP41, IP17, IP24, IP30, IP38. Uh, the ones that have stars means they need setup for the users. The ones that don't have stars don't need any setup. So now we're going to look at the business process flow here. After you finish doing your technical structure, set up your technical structure, you'll have preventive maintenance on any technical objects that exist in a technical structure, which you used to mean they, which you use, which we, you wish to extend it, their life. Um, new equipment should have preventive maintenance and once in a while function locations. So, the way the preventive maintenance uh, business process flow works is that you'll have equipment and function location. You create a preventive maintenance plan using IP41. Eventually, you'll have a list of PM plans. You'll ensure the PM plans have accurate information using IP17. You'll start the plans. You can use IP10 or you can use IP17. Then you'll do PM forecasting, IP24, and create the PM work orders, IP30. And then you look at the list of work orders using IP38, I mean IW38. We will now start. First thing we need to do is have our technical structure. So if we look at our technical structure, here it is. Now what we're going to do, we're going to look at our list of equipment and see what equipment is not installed. Right now we know that the bread wrapper, the floor lit, bread litter, floor scrubber, the welder, they're all not installed. So before we start, we will take these, we're going to see which ones have maintenance items. According to this, only the floor scrubber has preventive maintenance already. So that means if we do preventive maintenance of bread litter, we're fine. So we'll start off with the bread litter. I mean the bread wrapper. So first thing we do, we go into preventive maintenance plans and we create a PM plan, IP41. Double click on it, select this, MLF work order, enter, put bread wrapper monthly plan say one month you put the equipment here enter it'll ask you for the work center mech pm and then you gotta add a priority now the way the preventive maintenance plans work is that they either create a task list or you could add the notes right here uh, task list should be done when you're doing a PM data load. When you're doing a, a individual, you're just creating one on the spot, you should use the maintenance item uh, long text. So you go here and you add the instructions. So here we have instruction one is grease parts. Uh, oil parts, check bearings, check label, label maker, test run. Those are the instructions if somebody's doing PM on this. We save it. Now the next thing to know is that you need to use a call horizon and call period. Call horizon should be from 0 to 100. Now if you put 0 that means that the right after the PM is called the very next one is called immediately. So let's say you have a monthly and you have one for November, October, December. The moment they call the October one which will be in October, let's say on September 1st. The moment you comp you do the October one, which is October 1st, the very next one gets called, which is November 1st. So zero call horizon means um, 
there's no the, there's no waiting period. You immediately call it. Now, 100% call horizon means you call it day off. So in this case, we'll call 100% call horizon. Scheduling period is the window. How far ahead do you want to see? So if it's one monthly, maybe you want to see for the next three months. And then the start of cycles, when do you want to start this? So today's November 16th. We're going to say we want to see it on this day. So September 20th, the last time, October 20th, the last time we did this. So November 20th will be the next time this is done. And then you go into sort field. You find your sort field. Sort field is done in config, Halifax, and you're good to go. Press save. And that's it. So now I look at the list of PM plans, click IP17. This is also, this is set up in advance, so when you first get it, the list will look like this. And then you set it up. There'll always be, there'll always be a variant already created, like Monk 10, let's say. It's already set up. And then you just add your planning plant. So in this case, it's already set up for Halifax. I press execute. I look at all my PM plans here. So in this case, I'll see that uh, the bread wrapper monthly PM is right here. Shows me the priority, the person looking after it. There's no function location. It means the bread wrapper has not been installed yet. So what I'm going to do now is install the bread wrapper. So install the bread wrapper. Refresh. Bread wrapper now is in the bread line. We go here. Refresh. It's in the bread line. Now I need to start the plans. So I highlight everything. I go maintenance plans. And then this here shows me the data in regards to which plans are started or not. If it shows a zero, it means it's not been started. Any a number, any other number means it's been started. So what I do, I press change. Then I go maintenance schedule. And I'm going to start now. I'll press start. Save. Press refresh. It's been started. It's number three is there. Everything's good here. So IP41 creates the PM plans. IP17 is the list edit of all your PM plans. You get a status of what's going on here by highlighting them all and going maintenance plans. And if it has a number, it means it's been started. It shows the start of cycle date and it shows the call horizon. Here it shows you the technical object. If there's no function location, you should be aware that it's not installed anywhere. And maybe you should put this on hold for now. In this example, this floor scrubber is not installed anywhere. So I'm going to go put the PM plan. I'm going to put exchange. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to put the plan. In this case, the plan has been deleted, which is fine. Let's take these chunkers. All of them are created. I'm going to put this one on hold. Plan, functions, put on hold. This is on hold until I decide to install the chunker again. So that's the list edits. Then we go PM forecasting. Also needs to be set up. So here this needs previous setup. So once again we click this button here and it shows us what it originally would look like. And then you want to make it look like this. Functional question, equipment, schedule start date, and then the planning plant. Once you save it like that, you press save, you underscore the username. We're going to press execute now, and we're going to see all the PM forecasting coming up. So you'll go by start date, the order number, completion, function location, etc. So in this case, what we want to do, we want to do the schedule start date for this week. So we'll go from the 15th to the 21st. 
we want to see. In this case, there's only two, so we're going to extend this a little bit. Make it to the 28th, and we'll make it from the 8th. So here's all the PM. All these work orders have been created. If I were to run deadline monitoring, I'll create this work order right here. Uh, deadline monitoring is a uh, IP30. And then here's the completions behind them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run IP30. IP30. It gives you, it makes you put a sort field. So sort field is Halifax. You do it for the next seven days. This also needs set up. Originally it looks like this. And then you minimize it to look this way. And then you save you underscore the user's name. Press execute. It'll create one work order for the the plan that doesn't have it yet. Press back. Yes. Back. You close this window. We go back here, we're going to see this is going to populate now. We press refresh. It populates it for the next week. So now all the SPM plants have been created. Now we're going to go look at IW38. It'll show the PM the current PM plans, cur current PM orders have been created. You go in here and it shows you all the PM orders. The way you manage this, you go manage them by status. So anything created means it has not been released. It needs to be released first in order to be worked on. So we'll release, we'll release all these with a green flag. Refresh. So these are released. Now I wish to print them. Let me go order, print order. I refresh. They've been printed. So now they could be worked on. These, I have not decided to do them yet. Now let's pretend that I worked on these and I finished them. I go, go to, I mean order, confirmation, collect the confirmation. I could put in the hours. So one, two, five, 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 five. I said they're all done. These are all the hours for the work orders. According to this, I could, these are all the people that worked on them. I press save. Refresh. Now they're ready to close. I highlight them, tickle them, include notifications. Refresh. They're gone from this. These are the leftover PM work orders. So now as we look at this, we're going to conclude what we just did. We first create a PM plan. Once we create the PM plan, we look at the list of PM plans. Then we do PM forecasting. Then we create some PM work orders, and then we look at the list of the work order, prevent the maintenance work orders have been created and manage them. So if we look here, this right here is a config item, should not be touched, it's already been created from Maple Leaf and approved in advance, so this doesn't need to be done. It's just a category, and it has some data behind it. We go here, this right here is a unit. So. Uh, if you wish to make it a counter, you just put the unit of the counter. It could be kilometers or it could be hours, depending on what the counter unit is. Then you put the counter here. The counter, ha the counter unit has to match the unit you put here in the cycle unit. From here, you put the equipment or function location. They, they should be linked to the counter. From here, the work center could default in if you put it into the if you put in the technical object. 
In this case, Maple Leaf decided not to do it, but you have the option of doing that. If, if it's a very special piece of equipment that you want someone to look after at all times. Um, uh, as far as another config item would be task list. Task list, you can make it a uh, default in uh, the control key and um, the activity type. But uh, this will be talked about in the config video, the overall config video. We'll mention that. That's something to know. The task list is a config item. Errors you might experience are that the users create a brand new prevent to maintenance plan and uh, along with a brand new task list and along with a brand new work center and they backdate the prevent to maintenance plan so they wish to have it create a PM plan a PM work order from let's say a month ago and the task list and the work center were just created a week ago. Uh, when you try to process the work order it'll give you an error saying that the task list and the work center were not active back then. So keeping that in mind when you create your task list if you wish to backdate the PM plan you have to go back a month in advance. Once you create a task list has been assigned to that date and it's too late to go back. Same goes for the work center. You have to, when you create it you, to, you should backdate the start date of the work center. These scheduling parameters right here uh, there's no config configuration to them and the only configuration that exists is this item right here, the sort field, which you create for every plant. You have to create a brand new one for every plant. You have to create both a counter and a base unit. And that's the only thing you do in config. And that will be discussed in the config video. List of PM plans. Uh, this doesn't need to be done in config. You could go into config and set up the way this looks. But uh, you could also set up via the variant, so it does not be, need to be done in config. This could also be done in config the way it looks, but this is done via the variant, so you don't need to do it in config. This could also be done in config, but it's done via the variant. Um, the list editor also can be done in config, but it's done via the list, the variant, so you don't need to worry about any of that. So all these items have been completed and explains how you do the business side of uh, preventive maintenance.